out. My sewing scissors have disappeared. Found them. If you are not already a lover of the humble mason jar, I plan to recruit you to the mason jar fan club by the end of this video. <laughs> because today we're gonna make cozies for the mason jars. And let me just tell you why. But first, this is Pin Cut Sew. I'm Nikki, I'm so glad you're here. I'm very excited about this tutorial for you today because I've been using mason jars for decades. Yeah, decades. For a while, we actually used mason jars exclusively for drinking glasses. But the cool thing about them is that you can buy lids for them, but you can even buy like drink straw lids for them. So whenever I make like salad dressing, I put it in a mason jar in the fridge with a lid. If I drink iced coffee, it's usually from a mason jar. I sometimes frost a mason jar and pour my good beer in there occasionally. But this started because I started making overnight oats. My daughter and I really like overnight oats. And when you're eating the overnight oats, your hand gets cold. So I was thinking if only we had like the bowl cozies, but for mason jars, and then the light bulb went off and I thought I had to make the pattern. I have to make the tutorial. And I literally cannot stop making these. But then as I was making them, I was thinking of more and more ways to use them. So then I decided, why don't I make these insulated? So then they'll keep whatever's inside the jar cold and keep your hand warm. So it doesn't just keep things cold, it also keep, keeps things hot. So if you're a person who makes like pho or soup and takes it in jars to work, then you can put an insulated cozy on there to keep your soup warm. Or if you like to drink water, this one literally has my water in it. This kept my water cold for hours. The ice did not melt. And if you live in a humid climate like me, it kept the sweat off my table. <laughs> it's like a coaster and a cozy. But yeah, more gift ideas later. Right now we're just gonna get to the cozy making part. So what you need to do first is go over to my shop and grab the pattern that I made for you. It is not expensive, but it has step-by-step -step instructions and it has the pattern pieces that you need. So we can make a small one for the pint size jar or we can make a large one for the quart size jar. And in this video, I'm going to walk through a regular one and then I'm gonna show you real quick how to make a quilted one if you want to. And then at the end, I will come back on here and tell you a bunch of ways I wrote down to gift a mason jar with other things so that it's like a bulked up gift but you didn't spend very much money. So everybody you know can get a mason jar cozy for Christmas according to what they like. So yeah, let's get started. Okay, so of course you need the pattern first. When you print the pattern, you want to make sure that your printer is cutting it at 100% scale because most printers try to shrink things for whatever annoying reason. Your cozy will be too small. So with this project, it's important that you print out 100% scale. And then there is a test square on the pattern so you can make sure. Let me just cut this on out. Okay, so we're gonna make the small cozy first. You only need some scraps of fabric. I got these Ruby Star Society scrap bag fabrics. A few videos ago, I showed you about these scrap bags. I'll try to link to that. So I've been really enjoying using these. I think I'll use the butterflies today, whoa. And then you're gonna need another fabric for the lining and you will need some batting or insole bright. Insole bright comes in a package like this and it comes with a lot of it. So you could make a bajillion mason jar cozies with this. It keeps things either hot or cold and it's just an insulated fabric. Great for this use. But if you don't have any, you can either use regular batting or you can use fusible fleece. I made one with fusible fleece and it was nice too. So my scraps are a little on the short side, so I'm gonna have the selvage on the bottom, but it doesn't matter. It just is on the bottom. So right here, I'm gonna place this on the fold and go ahead and cut it out. Wow, this piece is exactly the right size. What are the odds? Okay, so here's my outside cozy piece. Now I need to find a lining. I think I'll use the stars. Oh, stars are not big enough. Ooh, I'm gonna use this one. Okay, there's my lining. So now I have my outside and my lining. Now I just need the insole bright. Okay, let's get started. The first step is to baste your outside piece onto your batting or insole bright. Or if you're using fusible fleece or fusible batting, 
just press it on. If your machine has trouble with the layers shifting, then you can attach a walking foot to your sewing machine. I have a whole video about the walking foot if you don't know what that is, but my machine tends to handle this fine it seems. So I'm just going to go stitch all the way around with a long basting stitch, usually a stitch length of like four. And I'm going, so that I don't have to remove the stitches later, I'm gonna stitch it like an eighth of an inch from the edge. Okay, so here's my basted piece. And now I'm just going to fold it in half with the short ends together and I'm going to stitch this. I'm gonna do a regular stitch length now, not basting, in a quarter inch seam. And I'm going to stitch the bottom in a quarter inch seam. So the short side and the bottom. Trim my threads. Now I'm just going to trim this slightly to reduce bulk, not too close. Same with this. And now we're going to box the corners. So I'm gonna try my best to finger press my seams open the best that I can. This is actually harder with Enselbright than it is with batting for some reason. And I'm going to bring that seam to meet the bottom seam and create a boxed corner like so. Trying, if I can, to get my seams open. They're kind of fighting me, so I might just not worry about it. There we go. So you're creating two angled creases. On either side, you're going to go stitch in a quarter inch seam from crease to crease. Same thing with this side. This side doesn't have a seam, but it folds together really easily. You're just matching up with the center here. So again, I'm just going to stitch from crease to crease. You don't want a topsy-turvy jar. So we want that to be nice and flat if we can make it. Okay, and then we're gonna turn this right side out. It's so cute. This fabric is so beautiful. It's Melody Miller for Ruby Star Society. So pretty. Okay, so I'm gonna set this aside and I'm gonna do the same thing with my lining, except this time I'm gonna leave an opening in the short side seam for turning right side out later. So on this side, I'm gonna fold it the same way. I'm going to stitch here and then I'm gonna stitch till about, I'm gonna leave this open until about here and then I'll stitch on either sides of these pins. And then again, I'm gonna stitch the bottom. Trim to reduce bulk, even in the lining except for where I'm going to close the opening. And then box the corners the same way I did for the outside. Okay, meet my seams. Finger press this open. This too. Pin. Same with the other side. Okay, so I'm gonna go stitch my boxed corners. Okay, so now I have my outside sewn and my lining sewn and I have a hole right here in my lining. So I'm gonna keep this wrong side out for now. I'm going to put my right side out, outside, inside of it. Outside, inside, inside, outside. Slip it in there like a glove, matching this side seam. Pin the seams together, open if I can, and then match the seam all the way around. And now I'm going to go stitch around the top. Now my sewing machine does not have a removable arm, so sometimes people put like slip this over the arm and just sew around it. But an easier way is actually to sew from the inside of the cylinder. So your presser foot is in here. I'm gonna show you what I mean. I'm going to stitch this so that the cylinder, or so that my presser foot is inside of the cylinder. It's very easy to go all the way around. This time I'm going to use a, a 3 eighths of an inch seam. I'm able to just move it along as I need to. So there is my finished seam. So now it's time to turn it right side out. This is a really easy project. Not very many steps at all. If you batch cut and batch sewed, you could make a ton of these in a short amount of time. Okay, so there's our cozy. Let me get the corners out. Before I tuck the lining inside, I'm going to sew my opening clothes. So I'm just going to turn the raw edges under as if I had sewn them. You can hand sew if you're a perfectionist, but I am just going to go edge stitch my opening closed. Okay, there's my edge stitching. And now I can tuck it inside. So we want to get the top edge nice and neat. So you sort of just keep tucking and rearranging until it looks pretty. You don't want any lining poking out like this, you know, you want it all nice and flat in there. So it's normal to have some wrinkles in the lining. You just don't want them at the top where you're about to sew. 
I'm put my pins on the inside because that's where I'm going to sew from. I'm actually going to turn it this way so I can top stitch from the inside of the cylinder but on the right side of the cozy. Then I can put my pins this way. I just like to get everything flat. You can try pressing if you want, if you have a mini iron like me. I find it hard to get the iron in there on this little cozy. And this seems to work fine. And I'll show you an ironing trick when it's done. Okay, so again sewing from the inside of the cylinder, I'm just gonna go top stitch a quarter inch from this top edge. Okay, trim my threads. Okay, now I can turn it and place it on my jar. By the way, these work for the same for both wide mouth and the smaller mouth jars. The body of the jar is the same size. So now that it's on my jar, I can give it a good press and get everything nice and flat. It will not hurt the glass. Ooh, this one is so pretty. So pretty! Okay, now let's learn real quick how to make this quilted version. I'm just gonna show you how to quilt the piece and how that works. So if you've seen a few other recent videos like the quilt as you go baby bibs or the quilt as you go, oh, the little pumpkin coaster, then this is the same kind of a concept. So first we're gonna get a piece of insole, right? Big enough, this time I'll make a large one because I wanna make one of these for my friend. Okay, so here's my big jar piece and I'm going to cut a piece of insole bright that's just slightly bigger than I need it to be. I'm not going to cut it to size yet. Probably could have done that more efficiently but oh well. About here. Now I'm basically just going to cover this piece of batting or insole bright with strips of fabric one at a time. Okay I will start with this piece making sure it's big enough for my pattern and it it is, barely. And then I'm just going to sew a strip, right sides together, onto it. All right, I'm gonna press that open. So I'm not gonna have to do any quilting on here because I'm already stitching it directly onto the batting. I'm just going to keep adding big enough strips. And then I'll do the same thing going this direction. It helps to start in the middle so things don't just get like wonky. Okay, here's my quilted piece. I'm going to fold it in half just like I would if I were using one fabric. I'm going to get my pattern, the large version, and then I'm just going to cut it out. And then after that, you will just sew the mason jar cozy like we did for the other version. So I won't finish this one on camera because the process is the same, but I will show it to you when I'm done. And I will tell you all of those gift ideas because I have a lot. I had to start writing them down because I had so many. All right, let me finish this and I will show it to you. All right, here it is all cut out. So I'm gonna finish it and then I'll show it to you and we'll chat. Okay, I finished. So cute, now I have quite a collection. I think I have four small ones and two big ones. But I am definitely going to make more because pretty much everyone in my life is going to get a jar and a cozy for Christmas, but not just by themselves. So I start, had to start writing these ideas down because I just kept coming up with more like I was, I was driving and stuff and I didn't want to forget them. So here are my gift ideas for this. Whenever I give, gift something that's kind of small and handmade, it's fun to sort of bulk up the gift so it's not just something small, even though it is a good something. So I already mentioned whenever I go to someone's house for dinner, if I'm invited over, or maybe you're visiting a new baby or something, I bring flowers and I bring them in a mason jar. It would be so cute to put a cozy on a mason jar, especially if it's an insulated one they can use over and over whenever they drink iced coffee or whatever, their water, whatever. And so this is what I'm gonna start doing now when I gift flowers. I always have mason jars on hand. They're so cheap to have around and I just give them away. Okay, I already mentioned overnight oats. So if you have someone in your life who takes mason jars to work and say eats salads or soups or overnight oats, I thought it would be really fun to gift one and then include recipe cards or even make a recipe book or I bet there's already recipe books you can buy and add to the gift as like jar like jar lunches you know other people like my parents they really love craft beer so if I got them an insulated jar cozy or made them one 
then their beer could stay cold after they pour it out into their glass, especially if they frosted it first, which I know they do. <laughs> oh, so I had asked my friend Mariah if I should make, if she thought I should make a large size jar cozy. And she said I was actually using, she was literally drinking from a large size jar at the time. But then she also said, I make one for my, it's some kind of health, like immunity tea. It's like spicy and potent. And so she makes it and keeps it in a mason jar. Then I thought a lot of people I know right now are into sourdough. You could gift someone a sourdough starter with a fun jar cozy they can reuse for something else. You can include your tips and tricks and recipes for sourdough with the gift. So how to spice up a, uh, what's it called? Oh, a sourdough starter. <laughs> oh, if people like iced coffee in mason jars, you can, you know what? It's really hard to make an ice latte at home and make it taste like you got it from the store. Also, if people like other drinks like cold brew with the sweet cold foam on top, that's super easy to make. So you can include a little bit of recipes and instructions on how to make the perfect iced drinks at home and gift those with a mason jar and a cozy. You can also gift them these lids and the straw lids, I don't have one currently. I don't know, I move a lot and then I go through phases where I just start tossing stuff. Sometimes I regret it. The straw lids are one of those times. <laughs> um, I know there's a lot of people who drink iced tea and they, you can even steep the tea in a large mason jar and you could gift this with a cozy and with tea bags that make really great iced tea. You can, oh, back to the coffee idea. You could even get a nice bag of coffee beans and gift those along with a mason jar with a cozy. You can also gift a mason jar and a cozy with recipes for like um, the gifts in a jar. You know, like, have you ever received for Christmas like the cookies in a jar and all you have to do is pour them out, add the wet ingredients and bake them? You wouldn't use those ingredients with the cozy, but the cozy and the jar can be used even after they've made the baked recipe. I was also thinking if you drink root beer floats, that's another time when your hand gets really cold and you wish you had a cozy. So I hope this has got your wheels turning and that you're inspired to make some mason jar cozies for yourself and for your friends and your family for Christmas gifts. If you do, or if you have other ideas, please drop them in the comments because we would all love to know more ideas. And I hope you like this. I will see y'all soon. Bye.